Good afternoon to all my YouTube viewers. In this video, I like to discuss about practice paper one and two. Let us start the job. Which of the following pairs constitute very similar radiations? Hard ultraviolet rays and soft X-rays. Next, soft ultraviolet rays and hard X-rays. Very hard X-rays and low frequency gamma rays. And number D, soft X-rays and gamma rays. Here in number A, hard UV rays, ultraviolet rays and soft X-rays. We know that frequency for X-rays is more than ultraviolet rays. And uh, for hard ultraviolet rays, it is nearly 3 into 10 to the power 16 hertz, which is hard ultraviolet rays. And soft X-ray starts from same frequency that is 3 into 10 to the power 16 hertz. That means soft X-ray starts from Soft X-ray starts from 3 into 10 to the power 16 and hard ultraviolet frequency ends. It gives a range of frequencies but this is the extreme one that is 3 into 10 to the power 16. That's why it is called hard ultraviolet rays. These two will match. It means uh, choice A is correct. Here you can see four choices are here. Hard ultraviolet rays and soft X-rays. This is okay. Now come to B. Soft ultraviolet rays and hard X-ray. It cannot match. Hard X-ray will have much more frequency than 3 into 16, uh, 10 to the power 16 hertz. So this is not correct. B is not correct. Number C, very hard X-rays, I mean the highest range, and low frequency gamma rays. We know gamma rays frequency is very high compared with other rays and it matches with uh, very hard X-rays. It range is 3 into 10 to the power 17. Hard. hard x rays 3 into 10 to the power 17. This is the finishing line of x ray frequencies. Very hard x rays. And starting uh, frequency, uh, minimum frequency that is for gamma rays that is 3 into 10 to the power 17. This matches. C, point C also matches with the required conditions. Now, A and C will be correct. B and D is not correct because it range won't match. Next job. Number two, let lambda alpha, lambda beta, and lambda dash alpha denotes the wavelengths of the X rays of the K alpha, K beta, and L alpha lines. 
in the characteristics of x rays so x rays for a metal we have to see the correct one now that k alpha k beta and l alpha and these are given and uh, that means this is k shell k shell this is l there is a big gap between k shell and l shell then m shell now if it um, uh, photon comes from i mean now from energy level in k shell is e suffix k and energy level for l shell is e suffix l and for m it is e suffix m then uh, for characteristics x rays for alpha k alpha we can write in this manner k e suffix k minus e suffix l equal to h c by lambda alpha because it will release energy uh, hc by lambda alpha similarly from k to m shell it will release beta beta and uh, that means e k minus e suffix m will be hc by lambda beta we know h into nu is the energy which is contained in the released energy that means hc by lambda will be the expression now for this one as it is uh, having a characteristics of beta uh, x rays so e k minus e suffix m will give you hc over lambda suffix beta similarly from l to m shell it will be like this uh, that hc over lambda dash alpha now from these three relations we can write down uh, el minus em for from here el minus em how to get it now equation 2 minus equation 1 that means th this will become minus this will become plus so e suffix l minus e suffix m will come that means this one minus this one we can write hc common 1 by lambda beta minus 1 by lambda alpha this expression will come you can see here this expression will come now thereafter uh, remove this hc from both the sides that means 1 by beta 1 by lambda beta equal to 1 by lambda alpha wavelength of alpha characteristics plus uh 1 by uh, lambda dash alpha this will be the relation among wavelengths for different characteristics of uh x rays now from here again we can write ek seeing this diagram you can understand that this one uh ek minus e suffix m e suffix k minus e suffix m will be the highest energy difference e suffix k minus e suffix m will be greater than this one that is e suffix k minus e suffix l e suffix k minus e suffix l again it is greater than e suffix l minus e suffix m so from here this difference will give h c by lambda beta this will give hc by 1 by lambda alpha and this will give 1 by lambda dash alpha now just uh, the, um, uh, as it is reciprocal just make it in this way uh, that uh, lambda dash alpha will be wavelength of this characteristics lambda dash alpha will be greater than lambda 
alpha and this one will be greater than uh, lambda beta i mean uh, wavelength will be maximum for lower energy and uh, the uh, for beta characteristic it will contain uh, smallest wavelength L smallest wavelength means higher energy that is the point here uh, energy will be comparatively compared with this one will be less and here energy difference will be least now wavelength is more here now from the choices you can see we can write uh, here this one is the greatest you can see a is correct as well as c is also correct we got this one as well as this one these two cannot be in your answer so uh, b and d is wrong and a and c will be correct for this particular question now come to next job now you can see here when an when an electron moving at a high speed strikes a metal surface which of the following are possible when an electron moving at a high speed strikes a metal surface which of the following are possible <clears throat> four choices are given here the entire energy of electron may be converted into an x ray photon that electron uh, will strikes with high speed it can give uh, the entire energy of electron may be converted into an x ray photon number b any fraction of the energy of the electron may be converted into an x ray photon yes uh, a is possible b is also possible uh, number c the entire energy of electron may get converted to heat yes this is also possible because after striking the uh, that striking material uh, it may convert into heat energy that is also possible number d the electron may undergo elastic collision with the metal surface no this is not possible because as it is uh, going to give uh, uh, energy x ray photon energy so uh, energy won't conserve in this i mean uh, if it is elastic collision it can cannot generate x ray that is the point what i now a b c will be the correct for this particular job now job number 4 here you can see two in this circuit two capacitors are in series and two resistances are series when switch a is open now there is a battery cell is given now in this problem when switch is open we can see a particular that current will flow through uh, this um, resistances through the resistances and as well as through this and it uh, after steady state situation and uh, this will be completely charged and they are in series so potent uh, charge will be same for both the capacitors now it is uh, under this condition we can see a uh, potential drop suppose i current is flowing through this then potential drop across this resistance uh, 6 ohm resistance will be 6 into i now 3 ohm resistance will have a potential drop 3 into i now take the ratio of these two this uh, potential drop here and potential drop potential drop on uh, 6 ohm resistance and 3 ohm resistance take the ratio we will see twist to 1 will come now similarly if q amount of charge is given here then potential drop across this will be q by 3 
because uh, it is in series so charge will be same and here it will be potential drop will be q by 6 it is reciprocal of capacitance now <coughs> take the ratio of these two this uh, uh, three uh, microfarad capacitor is here and six microfarad take ratio of potential differences you will see 2 is to 1 will come because q by c is 3 for this q by 6 will be there so dividing this two will give 2 is to 1 and at the same time we got here also 2 is to 1 now connect the switch now what will happen whether charge will flow from A to B or B to A, that they, these are the conditions given in the question. First, no charge will flow from through A. Charge from A to B. Charge will flow from A to B, then B to A. And charge will flow from A to B and later B to A. All these things are given. Now, as it is found, potentially here at point A will be whatever supply you will take E minus this drop equal to same potential is coming at point B E minus the, because these two are parallel now potential here and here is same before connecting the switch now once it is connected immediately potentials are same so charge cannot flow first, uh, through this you can solve this problem in this way. Take a supply V here and switch is open. Now current through this will be V by to, uh, 9 will be the resistance. Into 6 will give potential drop here. Similarly, potential drop across this will be V by 9 into 3. Take the ratio of these two potential drop, then you will see 2 is to 1 is coming. I mean potential drop here, it is 2 part and here it is 1 part. Total drop is this one. If you say this one, and that means 2 by 3 uh, will be here, potential drop, 2 by 3 into V and here it will be 1 third, something like that. Now, come to other side that is uh, capacitances are there now here um, what you will see say charges are q because as it is in series so it will be q uh, then the drop across the three um, microfarad capacitor will be q by three in terms of volts similarly for other capacitor uh, it will be q by 6 take the ratio you will get 2 is to 1 that means potential drop across da da drop and cb drop is same what it means v minus this drop will be give the potential at a similarly v minus this drop will give potential at b as a and b have same potential after connecting this switch no charge will flow from left to right or right to left so a will be the answer for this particular job now next job the horizontal range of a projectile is r and the maximum height attained by it is capital H. A strong wind now begins to blow in the direction of the motion of the projectile, giving it a constant horizontal acceleration g by 2, small g by 2. Under the same conditions of projection, the horizontal range of the projectile will now be we have to find out horizontal range under this condition when acceleration g by 2 is added in the system. Now we know that uh, maximum height attained capital H we can write u square you know vertical component is u sine theta that means u square sine square theta by twice g will come for vertical height capital H maximum height and for range we know formula that is u cos theta into capital T. Now capital T as height uh, of the, it is given. Here it is uh, uh, because height is fixed. 
so capital T will be uh, two times u sin theta by uh, small g. Time period depends on height, uh, max, um, vertical component of velocity. That is u sin theta. That means twice u sin theta by g will be uh, expression for capital T. I mean T will remain same though horizontal acceleration is there. Now, uh, as we understand that uh, because of horizontal velocity acceleration, uh, range will increase. Now you can proceed in this way. Now, uh, let us say range will be h dash. Maximum time of flight twice u sin theta already I have told that horizontal acceleration g by Now uh, range will change. The range will be how much? Now initial velocity along that direction is u cos theta into capital T. Time period will range, uh, time of flight will remain same because it depends on vertical component of velocity that is already shown here twice u sin theta by g it not depends on horizontal component now uh, plus half acceleration g by small g by 2 is given into t square capital t square this will be the additional increase of range now put it here capital t is twice u sin theta you know that this, uh, this expression will become like this this one plus half small g g by 2 and t square is 4 u square sin square theta by 20 simplify here if this will cancel it will be like this u square sin square theta by g will be here and this part already we know that this is uh, u square sin 2 theta by g that is the actual range that is big r it is given in the question uh, when acceleration along the horizontal direction is present, so this will be added in the system. That is, how much u square, this 4, 4 got uh, cancels, 1 by 4 into 4, u square sin square theta by g will come, multiply 2 here and 2 here. This expression will be equivalent to height, twice u square, uh, no, Mm, u square sin square theta by twice g is the expression for height, maximum height that you know, already I have told. Now uh, this 2 into this one is coming, so into 2 into capital H, then that means range will become, r dash will become r plus twice h. So here the choice is given, uh, r plus twice h is this one, d, d will be the answer for this particular job. Next job 6, a sphere of mass small m is given some angular velocity about a horizontal axis through its center and gently placed on a plank of mass small m. The coefficient of friction between the, uh, between, between the two is mu. The plank rests on a smooth horizontal surface. The initial acceleration of the sphere relative to the plank will be the initial acceleration that is to be noted here. Now we have to find out just after uh, placing the uh, cylinder uh, sphere on the plank just at that very moment uh, what will be the acceleration of the system. This ground is frictionless. Mu is zero. This ground is frictionless, friction force on the spherical object will be uh, against the direction of motion because uh, uh, this plank will have a, um, a friction force along this direction against the direction of motion and for the uh, uh, sphere it will be direct along the direction of motion. It will be along the direction of motion. Uh, because of this uh, uh, force, it will it will grip the ground and it will move, uh, uh, start rolling thereafter. Uh, once it is placed, uh, when it will uh, get this force, immediately uh, it will start acceleration uh, of this cylinder, uh, sphere will start acceleration. Now, we have to find out acceleration of the sphere with respect to this plank. Now plank will have an acceleration mu g in this direction, opposite direction and this one will have a, both the masses are same. Both the masses are same in the question it is given. You can see 
स्पीयर ऑफ मास सेम एंड द प्लैंक ऑल्सो हैव सेम मास नाउ फॉर दिस वन एक्सेलेशन विल बी टुवर्ड्स द डायरेक्शन ऑफ मोशन एंड दैट विल बी म्यू जी अगेन इट विल बी म्यू जी नाउ वट विल बी द रिलेटिव एक्सीलरेशन ऑफ द स्पीयर विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू प्लैंक now uh, 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 sphere acceleration is this one minus minus of this one because we have to measure acceleration with respect to planck so minus this is a, a relative acceleration for this minus is for relative acceleration and direction of the planck has uh, uh, opposite direction of the sphere so minus mu g will be there that means twice mu g will be the acceleration of the sphere d will be the answer for this particular job job number 7 a thin walled spherical conducting shell s conducting shell s of radius r is given charge capital q the same amount of charge is also placed at its center c which of the following statements are correct now here you can see uh, uh, spherical shell is there spherical conducting shell is there and in at the center uh, q amount of charge is given now um, uh, you see that due to induction what will happen due to induction q is given here A minus q will be inner surface of the shell outer surface will be twice q we are interested to find out charge density at the outer surface you can see here the first statement on the outer surface is the charge density what will be the charge density total charge is twice q use gauss theorem twice q divided by 4 pi epsilon i uh, sorry 4 pi r square uh, so that will give the charge density sigma so if you simplify it will come sigma uh, q by 2 pi r square that is given in the first choice so this will be the answer for first choice is correct answer now come to next part the electric field is zero at all points inside s inside s no that cannot be inside s is at center there is a charge so there will be electric field here all around electric field so b cannot be answered b is wrong b is not correct now come to c at a point just outside s the electric field is double the field at a point just inside yes inside if we take gauss th use gauss theorem inside this will be charge involved will be this one only q so that will give you uh, this one q by 4 pi epsilon not r square e and just outside the shell it will be twice q is involved so twice q divided by 4 pi epsilon not r square so definitely e dash is double the e dash will be double the previous value e that is twice e now that means this is also correct now come to point d that means c is correct a is correct b is not correct c is correct what about d at any point inside s the electric field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from c yes that will be uh, because electric field inside anywhere we use gauss theorem q by r, r square will come that means e will be inversely proportional to r square a b a b d is correct b is not correct for this particular question next job 8 in a ring a b c d of radius small r the lower half a b c has mass small m and the upper half a d c has mass twice m if in in both parts the masses are distributed evenly the ring is initially at rest initially at rest on a horizontal surface as shown in Uh, o is the center of the ring uh, let c1 denotes the center of the mass of the section abc for abc part lower part c1 is the center of mass position and uh, c2 c2 is denotes the center of mass of the adc for this other upper part uh, center of mass is c2 so we have to find out c1 c2 equal to there are choices and uh, <coughs> now for this particular job
Now, uh, we know that uh, uh, center of mass, general formula will be, uh, this is y-axis, so uh, ycm will be how much? Integration of small elemental mass into y divided by integration of dm. dm integration of dm y uh, divided by integration of dm. That gives the center of mass. It is a coordinate. So, um, this is the expression, this is the uh, formula, basic formula. Now, take a small elemental, uh, take angle theta, this is d theta and this elemental portion is lambda or d theta. Lambda means mass per unit length. Now, uh, for mass we can put this one because this is r d theta into lambda will give the mass of this small portion that is lambda r d theta is the small. And, and then y, y is how much? Because if you take this is radius r, then r sin theta will be the y, y will be r sin theta. Now, uh, take out uh, constant uh, lambda r outside of integration, 0 to pi is the limit. Now, r sin theta will come and to d theta. Now, in the denominator, lambda r is 0 to pi integration limit, d theta. Now, integrate the, both upside and down. Uh, in, in denominator, we will get pi, in numerator, we will get this one, that is integration uh, 0 to pi sin theta d theta. And we know that uh, it will give minus cos theta. Substitute limit, we will get 2 here. We know this is a very standard one. Uh, put cos pi, minus 1 will come, minus, then plus will become the cos 0, 1. That means 2 comes from here. The, the 2 r by pi is the uh, distance from here uh, to uh, y axis up to this distance. That means twice pi twice r by pi, twice r by pi is the center of mass position. Now for this particular problem, it is, uh, it is found that mass is not uh, in the uh, expression for center of mass. Uh, mass is not going to matter. So for this one it is uh, 2, uh, how much it is, 2 r by pi, for this it is 2 r by pi, for the lower part it will be below this AC line diameter 2 r by pi. Then total distance between C1 and C2 will be how much? Double of that, that will be 4, it will be 4 r by pi. Summing these two, we will get 4 r by pi. Uh, now you can uh, have a uh, very different, um, say mass of this part is uh, 3 m and here it is 7 m, no matter. Uh, center of mass will remain same, uh, distance between the center of mass will be 4 r by pi. Whatever mass you like, you choose your own, but it is not going to influence this center of mass. Center of mass of the... Now job number 9. A plank P is placed on a solid cylinder S, which rolls on a horizontal surface. The two are of equal mass. There is no slipping at any of the surfaces in contact. The ratio of the kinetic energy of P to that of S. <coughs> this is a simple job. Now we know that uh, as pure rolling takes place, no slipping is there. Now here at point of contact, velocity is zero. Now velocity at highest position is twice V. Center of mass velocity will be V. Now th that means this plank will move with twice V velocity and this, uh, uh, this is a cylinder. Cylinder will move with a velocity V only. That is, uh, for cylinder it will have rotation as well as translation. So it will have uh, rotational kinetic energy plus translational kinetic energy. For the plank uh, it has only translational kinetic energy but velocity will be double. Let us now here we can find out kinetic energy for the plank half m v twice v square will be there and for the cylinder it will be half m v square where translational and rotational part both combines I mean, both uh, together means this is the expression half m v square within bracket 1 plus k square divided by r square. Uh, what does it mean by k? k means radius of gyration and for uh, this uh, cylinder it is half uh, k is uh, r by root 2 that means r square by r square by 2 will come now uh, from here from this relation 
आर स्क्वायर बाई टू के स्क्वायर बाई आर स्क्वायर मीन्स हाफ जस्ट पुट हाफ हियर विल गेट थ्री बाई टू नाउ देर आफ्टर टेक द रेशियो नाउ द प्लैंक हाफ एम फोर भी स्क्वायर विल बी देर एंड फॉर द फॉर दिस वन इट विल बी हाफ एम भी स्क्वायर विद इन ब्रैकेट वन प्लस हेयर इट इज हाफ दैट मीन्स थ्री बाई टू विल बी देर थ्री बाई टू नाउ सिंप्लीफाई दिस हाफ एम भी स्क्वायर गॉन इन न्यूमरेटर फोर विल बी देर थ्री बाई टू टू विल गो टू न्यूमरेटर दैट मीन्स एट बाई थ्री विल बी देर दिस इज अ सिंपल जॉब एट इज टू थ्री विल बी द रेशियो ऑफ एनर्जीज नाउ नेक्स्ट जॉब You can see in solar radiation, the intensity of radiation is maximum around the wavelength lambda sub x m. If r is the radius of the sun and c is the velocity of light, the mass lost by the sun per unit time is proportional to. We have to see uh, what will be the mass losses by the sun in unit time. Let now as uh, this is given, we know from Wien's law. That is uh, uh, b equal to uh, uh, lambda sub x m into t because maximum uh, energy is belongs to this wavelength. Uh, that means max uh, temperature. If we uh, let us solve in this way, let the radius of the earth already given that is r and velocity is c and uh, ma- intensity of radiation maximum around this wavelength that is lambda sub x m. Now temperature. Let the temperature of the sun take T. Then from Wien's law we can write B equal to lambda sub x m into T. And from <coughs> Stefan's law we know that energy uh, power expression is known into area will give energy per unit time. That will be how much? Sigma T to the power four four pi uh, radius of the sun square. And surf- circumference of the uh, surface area of the Sun, that is 4 pi r square. That will give energy per unit time, uh, and this energy per unit time uh, will we can equalize with uh, Einstein's uh, energy equation, that is uh, m c square. From here, uh, we can get we can substitute t from here. B by lambda sub x m will come. That means a final expression will be like this. Small m will be. Uh, rate of uh, mass loss for the sun will be 4 by sigma b to the power 4 r to r square divided by c square lambda m to the power 4. Uh, these all these are given. Uh, these are constant. Now m is proportional to r square by lambda to the power 4 can be written. R square by uh, c is also there. C square. Uh, into lambda this is the given expression here i think this one r square by lambda to the power proportional to you can see here uh, mass per unit uh, mass lost by the sun per unit time is proportional to r square by lambda to the power 4 c square this expression is correct a is correct rest on neglect job number 11 For the transi- transistor circuit, for the transistor circuit shown below, if beta equal to 100, voltage drop between emitter and base, between emitter and base, uh, that means here, this is base, and this side is emitter. Here is drop. How much? Uh, 0.7 volt. Then the value of V C will be. We have to find out collector emitter voltage drop. That we have to find out. Now uh, we can do this job taking the now uh, this this, circuit, this closed circuit. Yes, uh, supply is 5 volt, and uh, here drop is given. Drop is given. That is 0.7 volt. Supply minus 0.7 divided by the resistance. That is 8.6 kilo ohm. Uh, divide this. Uh, we can get this one. 5 minus 0.7 divided by 8.6 into 10 to the power 
3 this will give 0.5 milli amps beta is given and we know that ic equal to beta into iv and f um, uh, as we know iv already available to us uh, that means uh, we can find out beta into this one will give 50 milli amps for ic now once ic is available once ic is available then uh, ic is available then supply is known that is 18 minus ic into this resistance that means 100 18 minus 50 into 10 to the power minus 3 50 into 10 to the power minus 3 is the amount of ic already have seen we are interested about vc we are interested about vc that means we can <coughs> vc will be how much from the diagram it is found that supply is 18 you can see here 18 minus this drop minus this drop will be zero that means we can write 18 minus this drop that is how much 15 into 10 minus 3 into 100 that will give you 13 volt that means uh, vc the drop across this collector and uh, Em emitter drop between collector and emitter will be drop between these two will be 13 volt that is c will be the answer for this now come to next job in <coughs> npn transistor 10 to the power 10 electrons enter in emitter region <coughs> sorry <coughs> in 10 to the power minus 6 second if 2% electrons are lost in base region then collector current and current amplification factor beta respectively are we have to find out uh, <coughs> collector current matlab ic as well as beta now for this particular job you can draw a diagram like this npn transistor and uh, this is left side is forward bias right side is reverse bias that is the standard practice and i will be this one this is ib and this is ic some i is always ib plus ic that we know and here um, electrons are dominating now this once this uh, battery is connected immediately this electron will move to this side and this is emitter this is base this is collector so in in question it is given that 80 80 percent or more. Two uh, percent only goes to in base region. So uh, 98 percent will be in the collector region. That means uh, that uh, as uh, 90 percent coming to collector region, so it will IC will be. Uh, 90, uh, we can find out IC with the help of this. Uh, first, uh, uh, emitter current we can take like this. We know Q equal to 10 to the power 10 electrons. An electron charge is known 1.6 into 10 to the minus 19. Then Coulomb will come. Delta Q dQ by dT we can find out here, and that will give 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 3 ampere or 1.6 milliamps. 98% electron reaches the collector that means uh, 98% electron are reaching the reaches to collector means alpha will be 0.98 this is a very important information now ic will be alpha i uh, we know that alpha is 0.98 and uh, 
that means I is already known that is 1.6 milliamps. This will become I because this uh, IV current is so small that IC measures the um, magnitude of I current. So here uh, we'll uh, say 98 percent is uh, going to uh, collector means alpha value will be 0.98. Then IC equal to alpha I. I is accepted that 1.6 milliamps. Now from here we can get IC 1.5 7 milliamps. Now we know IC equal to uh, beta IV. From here, uh, and take difference of these two IC and uh, I and IC, and that will give IV. Once IV is available, we can find out beta because IC by IV will give beta. Okay, that means our answer will be here. 1.549 will come. You calculate and you will see this A will be the answer for this particular job. Job number 13. In the following common emitter come as uh, common emitter circuit, E beta equal to 100 and V C collector emitter is 7 volt and V B E is negligible. B is negligible and RC equal to 2 kilo ohm. Then we have to find out RB, uh, sorry, IB, base current. Base current we have to find out. Beta is given. That means we have to take this circuit here. That is you can take this one, this path, closed circuit path. Now supply is 15 minus ICRC minus VCE equal to 0. From this 15 minus ICRC minus VCE equal to 0. From here uh, this is known and VC is given. You can see VCB is given 7 volt. VC is given 7 volt. So deduct this. You can deduct this one, uh, 15 minus 7 divided by RC, 